Hey everybody, Brian here. In this video, I want to show you this car here. This is a 2021, and this is a Honda HRV. It's 1.5 petrol, and this is called an ES model. Anyway, in this video, I want to show you the features on the outside and the inside of the car. I'll go for a quick drive in the car as well. If there's any information you want on this car, 086-843-1945. Call, text, WhatsApp, whatever suits. That's the quickest way if you want to get information about trading in a car, financing the car, or if you just want information on this particular Honda HRV. So anyways, let's start off by having a look at the, the features on the outside of the car. So the car is obviously black in colour. For me, uh, black is probably my favourite colour in all cars. So I always think it looks classy and upmarket and it's a nice deep pearl uh, black finish on these. So it looks really well. One thing that stands out on these, so this is kind of like a facelifted version. So as you can see here, it has this big uh, solid wing face apparently is what it's called, but it's kind of a chrome finish on the grille. So it's uh, really shiny and reflective, but it's, that works better with a dark colour. The wheels obviously have this nice diamond cutting finish, so they're shiny and reflective. So the inside parts are black, which is gloss. Uh, and then this section here is a light colour, so they look really well uh, at night time. The door handle is a chrome effect. And round to the rear of the car then, it has this chrome effect along here, small little chrome exhaust tip. The reason I'm saying that uh, black and chrome is always extremely complimentary. So it goes well together. And then this car obviously has nice privacy glass. So there's dark windows here and dark windows over there. So they look really nice too. A couple of important things on these. So these cars, they came out into Ireland in 2016. I know there's Japanese imported either Vezel or Vizel or whatever they're called. So um, in Ireland, we started getting these in 2016. They were made in Mexico for 16, 17 and 2018. And then 2019, they started getting made in Japan. So this car would have been produced in Japan. And then late, 20 into 21 they had a bit of a facelift the major significance so, so it had a facelift actually in 19 which was a significant facelift and then in 20 we start sorry late 20 we started getting led headlights so for me that's quite nice uh, i really like the big leds along here for the indicators and then the full and dip lights separate along there and they're individual leds so there's excellent light but they're also kind of classy and upmarket looking as well like even where the detail is there are things you wouldn't see like you're saying the big chrome grille but at the top section here it kind of finishes off where there's a black cover along here just to make it look a bit more distinctive. A HRV really for me is a car that, uh, and I've seen this over the years when we we're selling them brand new, it's a car where somebody wants a nice elevated driving position, but they want something that's not too big and bulky. So they still want something that's pretty nimble. And actually these days, the way modern diesel engines are gone, uh, this is someone that's probably more urban, lower mileage, and they need a car that's where they can't justify. See, modern diesel cars, they need a bit of driving, so you need to be going up in a motorways to keep diesel particulate filters clear and all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of people in cities used to be able to get away with that in some of the older diesel engines, but these days, not so much. So if you're not doing big mileage, you really need to be looking at a petrol car uh, or a petrol hybrid car. Uh, one thing I would say is this is a super low mileage car, so that's kind of backing up. And I'm saying the previous owner, she didn't do much mileage. Uh, so she would covered just under 15,000 kilometers on this car in the two years of ownership. And one of the really cool thing that she did was uh, she put a power tailgate. I'm pretty sure there's very few or none of them in the country that have that. So that was done. The car came in from Japan uh, and we actually fitted that. Well, not us. We subcontracted a company that does it professionally um, to fit a power tailgate. So that's a really nice feature and something that probably won't be found on any of them. Stupidly enough, I should have left that open because I want to show you the boot. Uh, and you can also use the key to do that as well. So the boot is in really nice condition. Uh, one thing on these, uh, the 17, 18, 19 models had a flexible tray. They became hard in 2019 onwards, which a lot of people preferred. Uh, the boot, like we're saying to you, uh, I think it's in very nice condition. And then there's a little bit more storage down there because you can't put a spare wheel in these uh, from the factory. So uh, there's actually a massive boot in there because the next size up a car would be something like a Tucson or Sportage or Qashqai. Uh, when you factor all that in, it, boot is actually quite comparable the other thing as well you can do on these then so you see where the door handle is kind of sporty looking uh, you can let this up so lift lock really easy to do and you get this kind of tall mode uh, and you can do that on both sides or then like a normal car you can drop down the seats however when they drop they go down super flat so you see the way this section also drops and allows the top section to go lower again same on this side watch the seat see the way it drops down and then you end up with like uh, obviously you obviously take out the cover but you end up with this like massive load area in the rear and then to put it back so forward up and actually that kind of reclines the seat as well so you can have two kind of settings on how far back you want the seat which is useful for an adult sitting in the car which brings me on to the next thing the legroom of these cars is bizarre uh, what i mean by that if i sat behind myself uh first of all like we were saying i can recline the seat oops to let that back which is obviously more comfortable i have an armrest down here if i want as well uh look at the amount of legroom i'm six foot look at like 
it is bizarre so if you look at other cars which are in the bigger segment uh things like um tucson and sportage the legroom in my opinion is superior in that car which makes no sense because it's not technically as big as those cars and you know the people that buy these like we're saying they don't want a car that size uh, they want something a bit more nimble so pretty damn cool uh, if you ask me uh while we're there actually the key so that'll allow us to do a couple of functions like we're saying to you one two three and that's going to open the boot back there and then uh and similarly again actually weirdly enough the way it's set up on this one you unlock three times in a row also and that allows you to drop the boot down similarly again then uh, we have controls over the lights so say for example when the boot locks uh, i can lock the car I can unlock it, the lights come on, or they turn off similarly as well. And then I can also control the windows uh, from that as well, let them up and down. Or similarly then, I can lock them and I can also retract the wing mirrors uh, using the key also, when I decide to do it properly, that is. Uh, okay, on the inside of the cabin, in through here, height adjustable seat, rake reach, so it goes in and out and up and down as well. Uh, nice leather material along here, some chrome surrounds around the door handles, chrome surround around the speaker. Uh, the beeping is just to tell me I left the lights in the on position. The car is nice and tidy again. We haven't really cleaned it properly yet. Uh, got a low tire pressure, so I've got to check that. It hasn't been into our workshop. It needs to be serviced. That's fine. This car will have reverse camera, but it'll also have parking sensors front and rear, and even need things when you go for reverse. It drops that so you can see what's happening with the wheel. So parking sensors front and rear with a camera. And then over here, you will have navigation. Oops. Uh, navigation's in through there, which is Garmin. Uh, one thing I would say on that, it's not uh android auto or apple carplay just to get that pointed out but you can still stream music from audible and um sorry music from spotify and books from audible uh usb connectors in through there and a little bit of storage down through there as well so two usbs and a hdmi if you want to play a video up through there dual zone climate control so temperature for driver temperature for passenger front and rear windscreen demisters and wing mirrors gearbox is sweet they're really nice to use you'll see that in a minute automatic handbrake in through there drinks holders with an armrest that moves backwards and forwards in through there so we'll go for a drive in a sec this is cruise control with a speed limiter so you could say speed limiter so i can say do 60 kilometers an hour but what you might want to do on one of these is actually set it to limit and limit using a speed sign so that basically means when the car sees a speed sign, it'll actually slow you down when you go into a speed zone, which is pretty nice. Or it'll just tell you the current speed zone that you're in. Anyway, this is controls for radio. This is controls for Bluetooth. Headlights are automatic, so they come on at night, but they also dip when you meet traffic. Wipers are also automatic, so they come on when it rains. And nice things as well. I also like the way these lights are. It's hard to see in the video, but they're more like a an LED as well. So they're, I think they're quite nice. In terms of how they drive, well, they feel high off the ground. So it's an elevated driving position. And this one actually has, you know, the gearbox, the engine, the clutch, all those things feel real crisp because it's such, I suppose, quite a new car with low mileage. Uh, and in terms of, you know, the way the gear shifter works and all that kind of stuff, I think it's really, really nice. One thing I like on these cars actually even just kind of forces you to drive economically. So if you see in the binnacle here, the way the center around the speedos change from green to red, kind of reflects your throttle position. It kind of, you know, reminds you of what way to drive in a more economical fashion. The engine these, right, it's 130 horsepower. Um, yeah, fair enough, if you drive it hard, you know, you can hear the engine noise in it. But for, for someone like me, I like that. Like that, that is what I want in a car. It makes it more enjoyable for me. I like that kind of feedback. Um, it's a simple engine, non-turbo, straightforward. I bet you in 10, 15 years time, this car is still plowing up and down the road, no problem, because it's a simple, slightly older style engine, but really, really, really reliable. And I think, you know, compared to some of the modern ones that are out there, that's not a bad thing. This one feels like a nice, tidy, well looked after one when you look around the cabin. And like we are saying to you, like, you know, it, it, it doesn't drive any different really than when it would have been brand new. We need to service the car, obviously, and we're going to put a warranty on it and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, but I think anyone that comes to look at this car, they'll be quite happy in terms of how it drives and condition on the outside and inside. So they drive well. Anyway, if there's any information you want on this car, 086-843-1945. It's Patrick's garage, family run business and operation for almost, actually, sorry, more than 70 years. So if you want information on the car, please do give us a shout. Hopefully you like it. Thanks a for watching.